we want to concentrate on kind of what your efforts, what your understanding on what's going on, why suddenly you started going live. We obviously know, but let's talk about it, right? Um, and what the what 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 are you feeling? What are you understanding? And I think your your angle is very very correct. And again, do only the things that you're comfortable with talking, because no. I knew your angle was at trying to get a little bit of the UK media's coverage about something as egregious as the attack on the Armenian uh, sovereign, yeah. right? And you had quite the pushback from what we understand, right? And you can, yeah. And so uh, yeah, I, I'm happy to, yeah, I'm happy to talk about that because for me, I, I think, I think that the, the basis of why I started talking on Instagram um you know i've been doing a ton a ton of videos comedy videos i, I churn out uh, inspirational morning motivational videos every single morning and i have been doing it for uh, nearly three years i got hacked in january this year which is why i lost um just over 480 videos of me uh, on instagram uh, just inspiring people to think more positively but uh, which i still do now uh, on my new uh, instagram account but this was different this was really yeah. different because for me, it, it, it was, I was going down a, a, a tunnel, a funnel of negativity that was not only destroying me as a person, mm -hmm. but it was destroying me as an Armenian. Yeah. And, and I began to really, really get like angry with what was going on. Um, and only just being, uh, I've only just returned back from Armenia myself uh, about six weeks ago uh, after filming my second documentary, which yeah. is coming out. October. so i was like awesome. well i was out there everyone was lovely everyone's living in peace everyone's having a nice time why in god's name are we back into a, some kind of a genocidal war here um so i started talking about it and i was getting angry and i was fed up and my tagline is enough is enough you know because you know what We've been struggling since the 1800s with genocide, war, massacre, and 1915 was diabolical for the Armenian, um, you know, culture and the nation. And then we've not really stopped. We've been we've been constantly battered down by it's Russia or it's Turkey or it's Azerbaijan or it's the fact that the world doesn't talk about what we do and what we are. Um, and I just thought, you know, enough's enough. So I started churning out these videos. Thank you, thank you, uh, David. Actually, since we're already, uh, I, it looks like we're already kind of uh, getting getting into it, right? Why don't we kind of go in reverse, David? You introduce our guests. Well, first of all, everybody, thank you for joining us. Uh, Kev, yeah. as we're saying, like we started, we started the recording, but we're gonna edit it, obviously. So yeah, and, David, let's let's well, let's let's try. Why, why don't we just, why don't we introduce ourselves real quick to him, and yeah. then we could start the interview? Why don't we do Excellent. that? Right. Yes. Uh, obviously, uh, 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 my name yeah. is Greg. I'm one yeah. of the co-founders of Arash Media. A uh, big time fan of yours, Kev. Actually, I'm in Los Angeles right now. I was helping out a friend. Uh, we are from Northern California. Our audience is in Northern California. And then obviously through the, because of the inner power of internet globally as well. But our focal point was always uh, the uh, Northern California community. Rich, go for it. Uh, Rich Kazanjan, uh, producer and friend of uh, David and Greg. Uh, we've been activists for more than a decade. I live in Sacramento, California. I actually started the ANCA chapter here in Sa Sacramento. Um, but I've been, you know, I've been a friend of the of, of the crew for for years, and so I joined them uh, just at the beginning of the of the war uh, or the latest incarnation of it. Uh, and we've been just trying to produce good content and bring relevant guests to uh, everyone um, in the diaspora at large. And uh, and so I love love your work, and I'm glad that you're here today. David. Yeah, Kev, thanks so much. David Ojakian uh, and Greg, you didn't say your last name, Greg Nemeth. Oh, Greg, uh, Greg Nemeth, the one with the non-Armenian last names. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Kev, thank you so much for being here. Yes, yeah, so Greg and I uh, started Arach Media in 2016 um, during the Sasan Sarer uh, events that were taking place to, to really, we saw a lot of confusion amongst our friends and family and uh, the diaspora community about what was happening there. And so Facebook launched the Facebook Live platform. We're like, hey, why don't we just share what we know or what we're learning about what's happening there in, in a digestible format, if you will. Uh, so we, we've been going since then. Rich joined us during the war uh, in 2020 in Artsakh, and we were nightly at times for a while uh, while that was happening. And uh, we're back to multiple nights a week with what's happening in Armenia now. 
Uh, and as they've said, it's just making sure that we're sharing the information with people uh, in a digestible way and bringing on relevant guests, uh, prominent guests as much as we can. And so we're really grateful to have you. And Greg, I will say it's definitely much more than just Northern California. We have friends and family and colleagues yeah, all around absolutely. the world uh, that, that are connected. And so we're yeah. grateful uh, to have you uh, join us, uh, Kevin. I think we think there'll be a lot of interest in this conversation. So, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah. I'm, I'm Kev Orkin. Um, I'm actually an actor, entertainer, uh, and a business owner, uh, and, a, and a speaker. Uh, I, I tour all over the, uh, the world, uh, and I bring um, inspirational conversations about how to believe in yourself, how to, uh, you know, motivate yourself and, and get yourself out there. But um, I, I think, um, you know, I've, I've toured all over the world for 30 years plus now. Um, and I love what I do. I adore what I do. But um, the fact remains that not only do I adore what I do, but I also adore the people that I um, that I that I love and I, I tour with. So um, I've had a big, big, big predominant um, Armenian kind of um, input into my career, my life for the last 30 years. And I think, you know, it goes without saying that I think Armenians are some of the greatest people on the planet. Mentally, I think they've got the greatest brains on the planet. I think they know what they're talking about. They're great businessmen. They're great inspirationals. They're great inventors. They're great, great creators. Um, and I think what I'm seeing today and what I'm seeing the future of Armenia being absolutely annihilated I think it makes people rise from, like I always say, rise from the ashes of destruction to start spreading the news and the awareness that we need to do a lot more. And what you guys are doing with Arash Media is absolutely the right way forward. Thank you, thank you. Um, and we kind of, we've we've not stumbled, so I've been a fan for a while. Many of folks that are joining, I'm definitely gonna recognize you, right? But we, well, what I saw is when, the, when this latest attack happened, um, you went online and you started being like a little bit like very very active in terms of trying to spread the awareness uh of what's going on explain to us maybe however uh, uh, obvious this question might be what was your intention there what what caused it obviously there's the, the you know the the atrocities and what was the intent behind you starting to go live so much and recording these videos so much um and trying to kind of push the information out there first and foremost what triggered it was the azerbaijani soldiers uh, simple as that, and the Azerbaijani, uh, Azerbaijani government. Um, I want to make that clear, um, and I'm going to talk about that on this interview, but I want to make it clear that I'm not pointing the finger at Azerbaijani people. I'm pointing it at the soldiers, and I'm pointing it at the government, and their mindset and their mental um, kind of... Uh, well, it is, it's a mindset, really. It is a mindset. It's a mental mindset on why they're doing what they're doing, okay? Um, so that was the trigger. Uh, the reason I'm doing these videos is because in the 21st century, if we took the same scenario of what's happening in Armenia, in England or in France or in Germany, Spain, Italy, Austria, Switzerland, you would not not know about what's going on. Everyone would right. be talking. Everyone would be getting it out there and saying this is absolutely unbelievable and it needs to stop now. And what would happen? If Azerbaijan was attacking Austria within seconds, not within days, months or years, within seconds, every single country would come in with their soldiers, their armies, and they would stop what's going on. Peace talks would be going around the table and ultimately no one would die. The difference with what's happening in Armenia is it's happening. We have a second wave genocide. I mentioned this two weeks ago on one of my videos, a second genocide is happening in Armenia right now and since then a number of politicians MPs have picked up that that saying and they've been putting it out there to uh, to the public but a second genocide in the 21st century and no one's doing anything about it not one media channel is talking about it not one national paper is putting us on the front cover then to me that is ultimate genocide worldwide it's not just in armenia it's worldwide because you're hiding you're closing yourself you're blinding yourself and as we say with the three monkeys you're not talking about it you are as guilty as azerbaijan when it comes to not talking about what's going on that's why i started talking about it on instagram that's why i will talk about it and i will not stop talking about it till every human being on the planet 8.1 whatever it is billion people mm -hmm. yeah. know what's going on in 
our country. End of. Thank you, Kev. I really, I, I echo, I echo your your sentiment and I echo your your frustration. Um, a little bit more about your experience. Once you started doing this, right? Did you notice what was the resonance, the pushback? Sometimes us, and what I'm trying to mean, I'll, I'll frame this: us as Armenians, we are either in this kind of echo chamber, right, where you know, I know, everybody on Irish media knows, my friends that I'm staying with know, um, but it just doesn't get thrusted further out. Or sometimes we even see a pushback. Well, this happened because of that. And then there's this crazy conversation about the justification for our annihilation. You know, it's, it's, as, it's as bad as that. Um, and I want to know what your experience post putting out these interviews has been like, uh, both officially and just from like regular people. First and foremost, um, just to go back slightly, um, yeah. I had... Uh, I think it was nearly 20,000 followers on Instagram back in January of this year. Um, and then I got, unfortunately I got hacked um, and I lost everyone and I lost my account. So when I started back up again, I had roughly around 800 to a thousand people uh, following me on the Instagram. Mm -hmm. I put this one video out there and I copied and shared it, tagged it with the BBC news, Sky news, BBC Scotland, BBC Persia, BBC, and, as many channels as I could find, any yeah. online news channels was my aim. And the reason I was doing it was to say, guys, don't ignore this. Look what's going on, what's going on. And I did that. And the video that I put out was, you know what, what's going on in Armenia right now is unacceptable. We need to stop this. We need to move forward. We need to start getting it out there. Azerbaijan is annihilating us right now. There's a genocide happening. And I've seen videos personally sent by Azerbaijani soldiers to my account showing what they're doing to our soldiers i can tell you not last yes last week uh tuesday i came home and my wife looked at me and said what is up with your eyes i said i haven't stopped crying all day and she said what's happened when i told her she told me she said you've got to stop looking at these videos now she, my wife's not armenian she's an english girl she doesn't understand how incredibly close i feel to my people and and, and, and I know and I know she respects that, but I think she felt very concerned for my well-being because I was absolutely screwed. So when these videos started coming out, I was like, right, OK, I need to talk about this even more. And so I started um, connecting with other people on social media platforms, news uh, companies, magazines, this, that, whatever, newspapers. And then I went to actually share my information and tag the BBC News or Sky News or BBC Scotland or this, and I couldn't tag them anymore. Yeah. And when I went to their profile, they had barred me from sharing oh. information about Azerbaijan and Armenia to them. And that really got me angry. I mean, really angry, because I was like, well, hold on a minute. Are you not meant to be telling the world what's going on in my country? And I realised everything is about what they want to churn out and because obviously we know british petroleum is has a very big presence in yes, the middle yes, yes they don't want to look like they're promoting me against money which is exactly what it is okay. so basically that's what I, I experienced i experienced a closure and i'm telling you now i'm actually trying to um i'm going to put a video out i think today or tomorrow and i'm going to ask people to start following me they can <clears throat> well because i'm sharing the videos on tiktok because i don't know when they're going to cancel me from Instagram because I, I get the feeling that um, Azerbaijan, other people have power to do that. And all they need to do is find the right people and close me down. And they're going to try and stop me talking. I know that's going to happen at some point. Um, well, I just want to say, uh, first of all, Kev, uh, not only thank you for being on this show, but thank you for what you're doing because what you are doing is more than just a person broadcasting and using a platform. There are many Armenian, uh, you know, uh, celebrities over the over the decades who have shied away from their Armenianness and who have changed their name and who have sort of like discounted or downplayed that part of themselves in order to move faster in their in their career. And I understand why, um, but I, I just wanted to say thank you for owning it and really being, you know, conscious and present and 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 walking the talk. So I just want to say that. You know what? I, I, really, I really respect and appreciate what you said, Richard, because the fact remains uh, celebrities have to look like they're unbiased to everyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. 
because that's how they get followers. That's right. But I you now, and massive, massive respect to Chloe Kardashian and Kim Kardashian, right. who have both yes. shared my stories on their story platform. That's right. yeah. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Kev, I mean, we've been wanting to speak with you for, for a while now. I mean, we reached we reached out uh, over a year ago after the war, right, to talk to you about the importance of entertainment and comedy and to help keep our sanity. And then when we saw the report come through from Zartank that you had been blocked by BBC social media, we're like, okay, hey, like let's reach out and have a conversation about that as well. It just kind of brought everything to light again. Had, has anything come from that? Uh, have you been able to reach out to BBC at all? What's the what's the status right now of of your uh, ability to tag them or not? Uh, or, or are you still blocked? What's the status of that right now with, with BBC? Social media? I tell you the status of the BBC, the Sky News, and many other channels right now is this. Mm. Uh, I, I have a I have a question to follow up on that. Is there um, and I don't know and I know you, we all by the way this is the other thing that people don't understand we all are Armenians and we also all have our personal lives. You're a businessman, you know. We have our professional lives. Uh, you know, I'm a winemaker of all things. But uh, the the need to keep going is important. And is any news uh, outlet out there interested in this story? Because your story is interesting. Because you're you aren't trying to come out with some kind of political conspiracy theory you're just saying this is what's happening to my people and i just want us to know about it and the answer was no you can't you know and that's a story in and of itself you're absolutely right that was pretty much what it was i was putting the information out there and I, all i was getting back was no nah, you don't talk about this and um and it, I, no one's going to stop me i mean ultimately if they do uh, an andrew tate on me and, and stop me on all social media then you know what i'm going to do i'm going to go out live and i'm going to go to the theaters and i'm going to talk about it again and again and again it really makes no difference but you obviously reach a bigger a bigger platform on social media but the fact still remains again you've just uh, mentioned what i just said um greg it's it's all about fact i'm not I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist i'm not someone who's angry at the azerbaijani people i'm angry at, and i'm not angry at turkey turkish people i'm not angry at russian people i'm angry with the people of power in these countries because the people of power in these countries are so derogatory towards armenia just like mustafa in uh, Din dincini i think his name was uh, and adiji or something like that only last week only last week this man said if armenia doesn't settle down the nation of turkey has the ability to erase us from history and geography now can i just put a point there yeah i i as an armenian said that in parliament about britain today i would be in prison right. because because it is unacceptable unacceptable i'm getting angry now that right. someone can actually say that on national television in parliament and think it's okay to say that it is not okay to say that it is not okay to talk uh, about armenian people as some kind of scumbag waste of space people it's not it's about the fact that you are you're not respecting us as a nation you're not respecting us as human beings you're not respecting as a country you think you are better than us and ultimately ultimately and here's the here's the best bit your grandmother was probably Armenian. Right. Yes. You yeah, know, what's good. interesting about it, though, is that it, it's not too off brand. In other words, um, I had I, throughout my life, I've had a tremendous amount of respect for the BBC because I always believed that they were impartial, that the, the as the American news became so salacious and so, uh, you know, skewed and sort of you know slanted towards one particular polarization or another, um, I, I had a lot of respect for the BBC. But, you know, I've got a radio my, in my kitchen where I listen to NPR and Capital Pub Public Radio. And that's like, you know, a, a very, uh, that, that, that's what I listen to often. And if they have a, any part of the story about Armenia, you know, I'm, I, I really want to hear it. So one day, just recently, just last week, um, there was a, a little blurb, but it was all in the subtleties. What the BBC said was, uh, tensions between oh no the, the the border conflict between armenia and azerbaijan so they start with armenia as though they're the aggressor and then pushing towards azerbaijan and and it's it's all in the way that they unpack it and then they say things like 
uh, that there are X amount of confirmed dead by the Azerbaijanis, and they don't say anything about the Armenians. So That's right. the way that they're subtly framing it is, well, the Armenians are the aggressors, and these people have they, these. They they won't say it, but it's the our oil friends have to have to deal with this with this neighbor. And all you have to do is look at the GDP of all these countries and find out who's doing what. And Armenia has never wanted to encroach on anybody's territory, but we've lost so much. Um, and so all I'm saying is, is that it, it's on brand. Yeah. yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Totally. Totally. It, everything is aimed towards the fact that Azerbaijan are not the aggressors. Um, and Azerbaijan, well, with all due respect, you sat around, by the way, I think Nikol Pashinyan, um, I think um, uh, he, he's not playing the cards right. I think there's a lot of fear um, in, in, in what he's doing right now. Um, but do I blame him? No, I think running a, running a country, being a leader is a very difficult thing. It is a very difficult thing. And I think he's thinking incredibly hard about his decisions. But when you are surrounded by Putin, Erdogan and Aliyev, and you're surrounded by three very big nations that are attacking Armenia, then as a, you know, president, prime minister of, of Armenia, doing what you're doing is going to be very difficult. And what's happening is all these conversations are coming out via his media or other media channels saying we're having peace talks with Aliyev. We're having peace talks with uh, Putin coming in. We're having peace talks, peace talks, peace talks. Well, if these peace talks are happening, why in God's name, and I'm just saying it out loud, why in God's name on the day you announce that you and Ali have both want peace, you then see a picture of an Azerbaijani soldier having mutilated an Armenian female soldier, not just with cutting her arms and her legs off, but yeah. then a female sticking one in her mouth, but then on top of that, filming it for entertainment purposes, and then showing another video of uh, an Azerbaijani soldier urinating on a dead Armenian soldier. Now, what part of this, in my humble opinion, is one, is it war? Because I've been to war. I've been on the front line in Afghanistan, in uh, Cyprus, in Germany. I've gone to entertain soldiers in those countries. Not one soldier, not one soldier has ever enjoyed killing another soldier they've done it because it's necessary and it's war i've never seen one soldier british american australian ever film look who we've killed look how we've done it look at what we do i've never seen that yeah. but why is it as a Beijing, to do that on the day they announce talks and no one is saying anything well, that's what i understand the cruelty is part of the point the cruelty is part of the point. That's what they do. And I hate to paint with such a broad brush, but we could pull up within moments, we could pull in, pull up footage of, uh, of, you know, Azerbaijani schools indoctrinating kindergartners into hating Armenians. Yeah. So this is behavior that has been meticulously cultivated and grown over the past decades. Correct. Right? Yeah. So, so what we're seeing now is this dehumanization of the Armenians. And so just to back up a, a minute, some years ago, I spoke on a panel with um, people from the LGBTQ community, people from the NAACP, the Chicano American League, the Jewish American League. We had a huge panel. I was representing the Armenians. And we were all discussing the escalation between personal disagreements into cultural uh, friction, which turns into institutionalized racism, which turns into a policy of extermination and genocide. So there is an escalation path. And you, can, and you can look at, um, you know, many different sources to see that escalation path. And and the problem is, is that without people like you, and to some degree, us, I want to pat ourselves on the back, but anybody who's trying to raise awareness, what we're trying to do is say, there are warning signs. They have been on a path, and here's where we are. And if we don't do X, Y, Z, these things are going to happen. And 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 the, the maddening thing is, is when we're, I feel like when we're being dismissed or when we're being put down or when we're being junted from trying to get more awareness going. I mean, they they had a lot of awareness about Ukraine, but nobody wants to talk about Armenia. It's um, it's 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 troubling. In on its best days. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. And I think what you're saying is not just fact, but it's also a future uh, dilemma uh, for not just Armenians. And, and I want to point out, I'm not kind of um, exaggerating here when I say this, but 
it is human um, fact. It is a categorical fact that, and, and England is by, by far the biggest um, uh, culprit to this, is once they've taken a country, uh, and we're talking their history of Britain, they go, oh, we can do that again. Then they take another country like India. Oh, we can do that again. Then they take another country. And they've continued that barbaric way of accumulating uh, land, countries, and the respect that England, ha England had in those years and with the kings and whatever. Then look at what Azerbaijan is doing right now. Azerbaijan is, with the help of Turkey and with the help of Putin in Russia, they are, they are getting away with a lot of criminal war right now, which we call genocide, and no one is saying anything. Now, if Azerbaijan, which they won't succeed, of course, but if they were to succeed, who's to say that they won't then go on to Iran or they won't then go on to Iraq or Turkey within that, uh, within them, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of surrounded. Because once you've done one country, you then become hungry for another one and another one. And well, your nation of hate, of genocide, of trying to accumulate land that doesn't belong. To not just you but to anyone land is land we have a home we are blessed to live where we live the planet everyone's put a, a, a price tag on it but the the fact remains it is nobody's except the planet and, and we just live on this planet and i don't get the mentality of how they can come along not only take our lands in armenia so they're accumulating these lands back well actually you know what we'll take more lands and blah 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 wow. but then we'll destroy the history that goes with it will destroy it. why yeah why? well uh, well my answer is because again and this is what i'll point to david and i and richard's advocacy work that we've done for over a decade now on the armenian genocide recognition is uh uh kev unfortunately the answer is actually more grimmer uh it's it's the it's the well it's what what it's what that pm said in the turkish parliament it's we're not just going to destroy you, we'll erase you from history. Um, and I want to circle back on something you just mentioned, right, uh, uh, about the, the, first of all, I'm, I'm sorry about the, you know, the, the, the insane experience that all of us Armenians are facing because of these videos that are circulating, right? But um, the build up to it, right, and your question about like, you know, yes, the average service men and women out there, they are professionals because it's a profession that they're, they're, they, 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 they enlist in, right? Um, we need to take a take a step back at 30 years of the development of the new Republic of Azerbaijan and the videos that we've also all seen of the school children of the numerous places literally indoctrinating entire societies into dehumanizing who Armenians are. And once you do that, you know, we can pinpoint to, you know, Nazi Germany, right? That's how you essentially, uh, uh, what do you call it, retool the entire society to think that if you, those people are Armenian, they're not human. And then you enlist soldiers that have been taught that, you know? So that's my kind of grim explanation as to, and I understand humankind, we shouldn't be doing that. And, and, I, and I, I agree that there are Azeris that definitely don't see that, but my, that's my only understanding well, of how we're seeing that is because we've been dehumanized by their government. Well, Greg and, and Greg and Kev, to, to bridge both of your points, uh, Greg, they, they, they have been indoctrinating their, 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 their kids. But on the other side, Kev, what they're also doing concurrently is they're laying the groundwork for the justification of it by saying that our Armenian lands are actually historically theirs. They've just made some recent comments that suggest that. But these, these, these comments go back years. Aliyev has been trying to claim Yerevan and many other parts of Armenia. As a matter of fact, just recently, and Greg, maybe you and David can, can speak to this a little bit more, um, they, the, the Turkish government just announced that they have recognized this, this Turkish nation that is through the middle of Sunik. They've essentially taken Sunik and said, this is our corridor, this is a nation, and we have a flag for it, and we're going to internationally recognize it. So what they're doing is they're saying, these lands are ours. They're occupying. They're essentially using part of the Russian playbook to, to say, well, this Donbass region, all this, this is all Russian, so we're going to take take it. And so they're doing. And, this and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm 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 a history buff. Before we take this on a tangent, this is how the the United States uh, formed the country of Panama. 
It used to be Colombia, for those that don't know. And, and uh, the United yeah. States said, we need the, the Panama Canal. And, oh, do you want to be independent? And we'll recognize it. So this is the, you know, like the, the, the colonial nations have done this all the time. And mm -hmm. Azerbaijan is not doing anything new. And Turkey is definitely not aiding it. What we as Armenians need to try to prove to the world, and Kev, you are doing it so, so well. And we want to pivot to how we can help you in that journey, um, is amplify that, that that's not OK because doing that completely dishovels the entire world order, okay? Because now, you know, tomorrow, well, then Texas should be independent and then, you know, this should be that. And then, you know what, Scotland, hello, remember, you're in, let's do it, you know? And things are just gonna start going so array and the, the cost and value of human life gets mixed in this insane political nasty shuffle. And that's- There's not a lot of us left. Yeah. Yeah, there's not Kev. You know, you've been so, you've been so vocal, and we're grateful for your work. Yes, we're fighting up against these geopolitical, this huge geopolitical nations that have so much control: Azerbaijan, Turkey, Turkey being a NATO, Azerbaijan supplying uh, Europe's energy. What can we do to help amplify your work? And what advice would you have for for viewers? to what what can they do to help increase the awareness what, what can we do i'll tell you what to do um it's funny because actually speaking to a number of armenians i had a few armenians on the platform uh when one of my videos who was shared by chloe kardashian got just over two and a half million hits awesome. Uh, awesome. Within, yeah within like three days and it was great and we had a really you know we had a really good conversation with a number of people but i've, I've been private messaged by a number of Armenians around the world saying, stop talking, stop spreading um, this information because, you know, uh, Turkey has been good to us and, and this and that, whatever. And I said, well, you're not understanding the videos. I'm not saying Turkey and the people in Turkey are the aggressors. I'm saying the mentality of the soldiers and the governments and the political governments and the people that are coming together, the people with power are the ones that are making the wrong decisions. Because if we ultimately look at what's going on, it is unacceptable to have that mentality to think that you can come up to like a playground bully, which I mentioned in one of my videos, coming up to a little Armenian and beating the crap out of him, stealing his money and walking away. That is unacceptable. If we saw that on a playground today, we'd go up to the child that did the bullying, we'd pull them to one side and we'd find out what it is that's wrong with that child. Are you being bullied at home? Are you be Because ultimately there's got to be an inner issue, which is why you're bullying other people. Um, so if we take that analogy and then look at Azerbaijan or Turkey, there is a ongoing fright and a scare that the information will be proven. And it has been proven time and time again that Armenia had a genocide. Armenia had this much land. Armenia did this. Armenia is 7,000 years old. Azerbaijan is only 97 years old. And Turkey is uh, 500 and something years old. So all these facts that are out there are scaring these nations because they're going we don't want them to talk about this we don't want them to talk about it so we've got to do more we've got to do much and by us not staying silent to a certain degree is encouraging these countries to do worse and like you just said earlier uh, the fact that in the schools they're armenians are bad armenians are bad armenians are bad armenians are bad so when an azeri um meets you they don't know what to say or do and i can tell you that for a fact that i was in germany only a few weeks ago and an Az Azerbaijani taxi driver picked me up and he said to me um hello and I said hi and he spoke Turkish and I speak fluent Turkish so I said to him um oh I said where are you from and he said I'm from uh, Azerbaijan I said oh right okay I said uh, he said where are you from I said Armenia and he looked at me and I thought is he going to stop and ask me to leave get out the taxi and he said do you know what's happening in my country in your country is so sad and he opened up. He was a 70, 75 year old man. And he opened up about it, which made me realize that actually the mentality is not just been corrupted by the children being told that this is wrong. You know, Armenians are bad. We need to get rid of them. But in actual fact, they're not allowed to think for themselves. That's why they leave these countries. So they have freedom of speech, freedom of mind. And what I would love help from you guys is not only to get this information out there, but to encourage other armenians with platforms you've got a thousand followers great you've got ten thousand followers even better you've got a hundred thousand followers we're making a change 
just share the videos, share the information, and do your own. Talk about your concerns about Armenia. Get it out there because you know what? It is about communication. Simple right. as that. Right. Yeah. Well said. Right. Um, so, uh, I mean, that, that I can't agree more. Uh, the interhuman connection is very important. And it's in times of war, it starts to get lost on us. And that's true because so I'm, uh, we're all Armenian. Not only are we all Armenians on this, on this call right now, we're Armenians from different backgrounds. I'm actually yeah. Armenian born in Soviet Union. Um, I'm from a, uh, from a republic where there were Armenians and Azeris living in villages next, side by side. Um, I'm trying to be sensitive as to how to place this. Yes, uh, peace and uh, prosperity is what we want to go towards, right? But we want to be ensured as Armenians that we're also protected and that we're also either ourselves protect ourselves or that the international order can at least guarantee us the sovereignty that we've been granted for the past 30 years that is being respected you know what i mean and unfortunately i'm just kind of not that positive in seeing that the the world what we call the world order is being shaken right now is what we what, what i'm generally understanding and i think europe for lack of a better word that i've had a lot of kind of uh uh i've, I've been betting on for so long is a little bit powerless at the fact that they're also hungry like my friends in the uk that are not armenian i have many uh, are saying like you know the the, the, the energy prices are skyrocketing soon, right? And in my head as an Armenian, I'm like, oh God, that means that, you know, anything Armenia needs to be squashed right now because we are hungry for that pipeline. You know what I mean? And that's what you, I think ultimately that's what you saw with BBC, uh, literally. Because the reason, here's the crazy thing. We always think, oh, social media, there's got to be something X, Y, Z, somebody must have blocked me. No, the BBC social media is actually corporately run. There's a department there. There are interns and paid people there that saw, oh my God, this guy is doing something. It's trending up. He's tagging us. Block him. So he can no longer try. try. And that is, a, that is a major problem. That's a Correct. major problem because they're stirring the narrative. A yeah. lot of other things, uh, and I'll kind of uh, stop there. The media has the ability and to turn on the spigot, right? For example, here, what's happening in Ukraine? It's atrocious. But we're noticing we were noticing that it's not just what's happening in Ukraine is that the media is telling us only what's happening in Ukraine is atrocious. If you understand that kind of uh, logic and the media is what's pushing it and we need to break past that. So we, you know, yeah, we, we, no, we I, what you guys are talking about, I think is absolutely what everyone should be talking about. I, I think, um, you know, what I think is concerning for all of us, and like you said, we're all Armenian here from different backgrounds. But, you know, what's concerning is that there's only roughly around two million Armenians in Armenia uh, and the rest of them are westernized. You know, they're out in the, the, the world. And I think, you know, we've seen we've seen what countries like Azerbaijan, Turkey, Russia can do to a small country like Armenia. And the, the sad point here is that people do not see that what happens to Armenia will also happen to the rest of the world at some point. Absolutely. And if we do it now, if we don't stop it now, then we yeah. are in a very, very serious um, uh, place in the world to the point where living in, a, living in a world like this is actually a pointless exercise if that's the way it's going to be. Absolutely, absolutely. We even, even heard some rhetoric around uh... Uh, land grab around Turkey, uh, Turkey and the Greek islands right now. We've heard it. If you listen to Erdogan, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the madness needs to be toned down. David, to you. Well, man. no, I was just going to say we're seeing, yes, it's pan-Turkic dreams that, that they have. They've had it for hundreds of years, and they're trying to bring back the uh, Ottoman Empire, right? The Tur Turkey and Azerbaijan and Armenia's caught in, in that. But for now, we do still have a, re a sovereign republic uh, We where we have to keep fighting. Uh, Kev, thank you for your work that you're doing to spread awareness. Kev, recent you were just in Armenia. You mentioned uh, as we were starting um, our, our discussion. Tell us about what your experience was like there recently, what you did there, um, and then share with us some of the projects you're working on uh, coming up. I was out there about six weeks ago. I um, I filmed my second documentary called uh, Ararat Uncovered. Uh, we climbed Mount Ararat. Um, we also videoed uh, a number of old Armenian villages that have been currently taken over by Turkey, uh, like Van, Kars, uh, Akhtamar, and 
we filmed a lot of the history there. We filmed a lot of the people. We, we went to Gumri. Uh, we, we did a lot of videography, a lot of videography, and we filmed some incredible um, things. We made it very lighthearted, by the way, because I think keeping it serious all the time is also quite monotone and it makes people bored. So we, we have a lot of comedy, a lot of entertainment, and that's who I am. Um, so that's kind of what, where we were with the platform. Uh, it was a great experience. Uh, we had the Turkish secret Turkish police on us for about five days, uh, following us just to make sure that we weren't doing anything out of their kind of comfort zone. Um, I believe we also had a sniper on us on one of the days as well. So it was it was a tough time, but we did the video, uh, the film, which comes out in October, and we had a great time filming it. Project wise. I just want to get more information out there, but I want to make things a little bit more. My personal journey is to show that actually every single person on this planet has a choice, a choice how to live, a choice how to perceive and a, a choice how to um, uh, kind of take in other cultures and other and other religions. Um, and I think when you don't have that choice, then you are living in a barbaric world where um, ultimately you're going to live and die without achieving your own gratitude of happiness. Um, and I think that's really important. And I think people need to understand that. So what I'm going to do, uh, one of the videos I was going to post, actually, I haven't done it yet, and I'm not sure if I'm going to yet. But one of the videos I was going to post was about the fact that I was saying, you know, Azerbaijani soldiers and Azerbaijani government are doing what they're doing to Armenian people. However, I don't particularly uh, tar the same brush with the Azerbaijani people. So what I was going to say out there was, and I was going to put the question out there, which is, uh, so this is a question for Azerbaijani people. Uh, do you think what's going on in Armenia is acceptable? And I was going to do it. But the, the wrath of abuse that I got, even not mentioning uh, Azerbaijani people and and Azerbaijan is going yeah um, you deserve what you get you scumbag and this and that whatever yeah, and, he, yeah. and you just think to yourself there is no point retaliating with stupidity because ultimately if you give fuel to a stupid person then you are stupid for giving that fuel to that that's, stupid person. That's right, that's right. so I would much rather ignore stupidity and speak to people with a, a, a mindset and a power set that they know that what is going on is wrong. No matter what you say, it is wrong. But why it's happening, why, what we need to do to come out of it, how we need to grow as a nation with our neighbours and ultimately live in peace because you can't just now take Armenia and think, oh, you know what, this is a country that's going to suffer for the next thousand years. Well, no, you're not. Um, you know, that's not going to happen. We need to put a stop to this because ultimately... Uh, we have a beautiful country, and if we don't do something about it now, then my children and my children's children, who are Armenian in blood and in, and in faith, will not know anything about our history. Because ultimately, they did burn our books. They did uh, eliminate our people. They did annihilate the entire nation, 1.5 plus uh, Armenians. And today, we don't have those history books. We don't have those Bibles that um, had all the information wow. Wow. everything. It's all gone. It's all been burned, just like the Germans did. So I just think we need to be very, very cautious that history is genuinely repeating itself. Right. Well, you know what, wow. Kevin, what, what, what I'm what I'm hearing uh, from from you is varied, and maybe you can you can just uh, make sure I'm being honest here. Uh, I'm hearing a lot of great stuff about about your experience in going to Armenia. I, I I think it's well. I've also what I'm also the way I'm registering it is that we need to pivot away from sort of this um, "woe is us" mentality and really promote all the good stuff about us, uh, because I think there's a lot of people that really don't understand how amazing and vibrant and powerful our culture has been, not only as a standalone culture, but in how we've helped motivate others. You know, a few years ago, I went to the Armenia exhibit at the Met in in New York, and what was amazing about that was walking around in this beautiful building of you know the the the, the met in new, new york this huge mu mu museum and having listening to armenian being spoken around me and having people look at thousand year old man manuscripts and 800 year old hand carved doors so there's a lot that we can do to promote the the power and positivity of this culture that couldn't that with any luck can overshadow all the negativity that's being thrown at us so i guess the the the, the question i would have is um, you know, I guess in line with what David was asking is what more can we do either in concert with you or, uh, you know, aside, you know, 
to to promote the positivity of this nation. Um, and, and it's simple. You you said it already. You said it already. Is we need to stop thinking uh, thinking like victims and start thinking like leaders, because ultimately, for the last hundred and whatever years, seven years is it uh, since the genocide, we've had um, we've had incredible. Uh, victimization towards Armenia and it's all about oh we were the first Christians oh we were uh, massacred in 1915 oh the woe us oh woe us you know what every other country went through the same thing at some point in their history every single country maybe not as genocidal as uh, what Armenia did but the Jews went through it and the Jewish peoples uh, you know went through that um that whole holocaust and um today you don't see Jews um kind of bringing it up every other second they what they do is they try and lift themselves through encouraging supporting with through positive thinking and lifting their um their jewish people whether they're children workers entrepreneurs lifting them to new heights and saying we can do better we can be better you know, we, we went through history but that's history tomorrow is the future and we need to do different things and different mindsets so i think one i think through your platform i think you need to be encouraging people to be more um positive mindset i think we also need to realize that actually each and every one of us has an incredibly powerful voice and if we can just believe in that voice and and we can start talking no matter what your um passion is then you're going to make a difference in this world and i want to leave this world where if i'm dead and gone one day my children can look back and go do you know what daddy wasn't afraid of anyone daddy was really powerful with his uh, statements daddy did what he wanted to do and he said what he wanted to say because he stood up for justice he stood up for his people but he also stood up for the world because ultimately armenia is just the first hurdle if um like i say if it carries on other countries will suffer like armenia in the future and that's why we need to talk now we need to think of a powerful mindset and we need to think forward and our take your talent take your talent and share it with the world you guys are doing that tell the bloody people to start thinking more positive the genocide happened it's moved on everyone in that genocide is practically gone yeah but we are still here today yep. they're gone we need to now be the frontline troop that moves forward starts talking yeah, yeah, we are yeah. still here that's, that's right. right we that's are right. still so if we can carry with that mindset i think we can make a massive difference to the world that's thank great. you. Thank you. Very I, don't, I don't want to take up your I don't think we want to take up much more of you, your time, but I just wanted to leave you with this. Personally, this is what I'd like to leave you with. First of all, uh, again, thank you so much for your work. I also know and maybe this is something that hopefully you'll it'll register with you uh, the way I'm hoping. Um, musicians and comedians have always had a special, unique place in societies all over the world because we're the people that can bring the news to people in a way in such that the king won't cut our head off because if we, you know, uh, it, we've just had a unique sort of privileged position and I want you to keep using your, your platform sure. uh, and find ways around all the roadblocks they're going to put in our way. So good work. Yeah. thank you so much well said yeah, Kev, thank you so much for your time and for joining us here on audach media and sharing your work with us and just ways that we can 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 fight the media bias ways we can spread awareness of what's happening and uh, we're to continue to follow you and amplify your work and we look forward to your next documentary of course you had armenia uncovered uh, in 2019 that you were host and now you've shot another one we look forward to ararat uncovered coming soon Yes, my, uh, my, my, yeah. my, my, my family, everybody that sees it. And actually, it's important that they're very, um, a lot of times I'm noticing Armenian works aren't always accessible and your work is accessible. Like, for example, I think we, but on Amazon Prime, we were able to watch that. And uh, randomly, I walked into my parents' house and they were watching it. I was like, yeah, I know that. Yeah, of course, it's great. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's important not to just produce work, but also make it accessible, right? Which is, you know, the, the, the point of it all. Yeah, totally. And actually, um, on, on that note, um, we, again, just to, I, I'm going to have to go in a minute, but I just want to say, we had, we, we stumbled upon Amazon Prime, who also um, deleted the video off Amazon channel. Um, and we were like, why? What did we do wrong here? You know, um, and then two weeks later, it came back on again. Um, but it, it, it disappeared and came back. So we thought, well, we need more control on this. So we put it on Vimeo. And yes. uh, if yes. my account if you go to real kevorkian uh, and you go to my instagram there's a link tree 
if you click on that, you can actually watch the movie for nothing. It's there. It's free. Amazing. And those of you that are watching right now, as obviously this is a recording that we will then uh, rebroadcast, uh, I highly recommend that you watch the K Kevorkian's uh, uh, work because they're entertaining, educational, not not necessarily lighthearted, but they bring they bring pride into our culture in a positive way. I really, really enjoyed watching your documentary, and I'm going to enjoy watching the next one as well. Uh, Kev, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, it's a tough time, but I think I, I know what we as Armenians are going to get through this. And uh, I can't wait to see you here in the United States. I know you tour sometimes. You do these things uh, for, from time to time when you do visit us on the West Coast. Um, you're a friend of Arash Media now forever Absolutely. and ever. So please, let's stay stay connected. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we will. Yeah, we, we are, we're not going to be defeated. Thank you. Kevin. No, no, we're not going to be defeated. Absolutely not. We're going to keep talking and talking till the world listens.